it this conference will now be recorded so what i can literally do is i can literally execute a few expressions here for example 3 plus 2 it will give me 5 okay 0 plus 9 it will give me 9 so the point here is it, it is working okay node is taking my code and it is executing it so this is uh, this is how you can test whether node is successfully installed or not okay we need node okay why we need node is uh, before we going why we need node uh, let's understand what actually node is okay so generally guys uh, what happens is uh, take a look at your browser your browser is programmed or developed to understand HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, the only programming language your browser can understand is what? I mean, it can understand what JavaScript. Okay, it cannot even understand TypeScript or any other language. Okay, let's say hello. So take a look. It has uh, it has throwing me one alert with with what hello. So it can understand uh, JavaScript. Okay, your browser can understand JavaScript. But what if your machine can understand JavaScript? okay your machine cannot understand javascript so the point is uh, in order to make your machine understand javascript there should be one tool okay that tool will take your javascript okay and convert that, that i mean your javascript into what a code something which you can machine machine can understand so node is that tool where it will take your javascript and it will give what uh, and it, it it will take your javascript and it will convert to javascript into the code which any computer or any machine can understand so node is like what uh, a tool to execute javascript in computers or in servers okay i mean server is also a computer right so we can simply say node is a tool to execute javascript outside of the browser not within the browser outside of the browser in a computer so without node.js okay uh, i mean Without Node.js, any computer or any machine cannot understand JavaScript. So Node.js is one such tool, which is very prominent, guys. Okay. So with the help of Node.js, uh, why we need is, I mean, we never uh, write JavaScript for what? In our course, we only write JavaScript for the browser. Okay. We only write, uh, though we use Angular, though we use React, we only write JavaScript for the browser. Why? Because we are going to develop front-end applications. Okay, in case if someone is going to develop the backend applications, okay, at that time they have to write JavaScript, okay, which can be executed on the machine. Now, such such uh, developers they need Node.js and they need a complete knowledge about how Node.js works. Okay, then why we why did we use Node.js? If you are not going to write any backend code, then why we install it? The point here is with Node.js there is another tool, okay, which will be helpful for us okay very helpful for us and that tool is let's say npm okay so npm is one such tool guys if you install node.js npm will also be installed so in order to have npm in your machine you have to first install node.js so within with, when you inst when you install node.js node is also installed and its respective tool npm is also installed so what is npm okay so uh npm is nothing but guys node package manager okay what is node package manager is nothing but uh guys with npm we can download install uninstall or upgrade or downgrade any javascript library okay imagine you're going to create one project now that project uh needs to have one slider okay now you don't have enough what we call time to create a slider one developer already developed a slider and he pushed the code into the what npm library okay let me show that library to you npm dot org yeah guys so now let's search it let's say slider okay or let's say react yeah 
so the point here is guys here you can search any javascript library okay and what you can do is you can copy the command here npm i react i means install okay copy the command the moment you click on it okay it will be copied okay now what you can literally do you can go back to your what terminal okay check the folder here right now we are in some folder user local library node modules npm come out of it okay for example let's create one random folder here let's say sorry okay let's create a folder okay let's and let's open terminal here okay let's create one more directory okay let me go to that directory right now so mkdir is nothing but make directory with folder name new tutz okay now i'm going into the directory change directory new tutc so yeah so right now you take a look so right now i'm in the directory which i have just created now now guys i can literally install the library which i just which i just what created here so the point is with npm what you can do is you can install javascript libraries into your project okay or into your machine okay and you can what what you can literally do you can literally remove them you or you can upgrade them or you can downgrade them or you can create your own library and then push it into what npm such that other people can also use so npm is there to manage all your javascript libraries so node package manager is nothing but javascript package manager so that is a thing so we need npm okay that is the reason we install node.js why we need npm is to install react or to install angular okay so we need, we have we need npm now to do all those things without npm you cannot uh, literally do all those things so that is the reason okay you need node.js and you need npm and one more thing guys i would suggest you to go with uh, vs code so go and download this particular editor okay one is node.js is must okay why because with that npm uh, without with that npm npm is also installed then go and what download vs code so these two are the important things uh, which you have to do okay if you have if you haven't done okay so just use this editor this editor is much user friendly okay So let me open this editor right now here within this folder. Just one second. Yeah, this editor is too slow. Okay. Let me close all the windows. Okay, once you install VS Code, guys. Okay, mm, once you install VS Code, what you do is you just restart your machine. And once you restart your machine, go back to your project folder. Okay, right now we have this folder, okay, which we choose as a project folder. And after going there, open your terminal in that particular project folder. Okay, and then what you do is you can simply say cod space dot. Now VS Code will be opened. Okay, with project folder, I mean with your project folder as what working space. Okay, let's see that thing right now. Hmm. Now take a look. My working space is what new to it. So this is where I have just opened. Okay, so that is it, guys. So these are the basic things one has to what uh, and one one should be ready to get started. Now let's get started. Okay, the first thing what we are gonna do is we are gonna start by writing some HTML okay 
and then we are going to write we're going to we're going to continue with what css and javascript so guys to write some html okay we need a html file okay just like uh, to write some java we need a java file so yeah let's create one html file right now let's say one.html okay take a look cool right so i just created one html file and guys uh why we need a html file means okay your browser can understand only three things guys html css and javascript in those three things javascript is a pure programming language where because with that you can write a lot of business logic okay so only javascript is a programming language css and html they don't fall under a category which is called programming languages but they are still what languages i mean html is a what hypertext markup language okay and css is what something which what uh, which uh, something which makes uh, i mean all the hypertext uh, all the html things uh, what we call look uh, i mean wait let me say one thing html is what hypertext markup, markup language which is used to create all the web interfaces now css what we do is with css we control those web interfaces we control the properties of web interfaces for example let me say let me show you something right now okay for example you take a look guys this image okay this uh let me inspect it and let me show it to you now take a look this particular section okay this particular section this particular section and this footer section everything which you are seeing okay is composed by what html tags this entire thing is what hypertext markup thing okay now every element which you see here has some properties what are those properties properties like what height weight uh, properties like color properties like font size padding margin so with html you create all these tags and with css you control those properties you control the height you control the color you control the alignment of it so html and css they go in parallel okay they are not completely different things okay i mean they are different things when it comes to what writing the code but when it comes to the purpose okay they both they both solve one thing and that thing is what creating a ui they creating a appealing ui which a user feels what comfortable to what to interact so that is the purpose of what html and css guys okay so their okay. their job is to, show, to, work uh, to create hello yeah can yeah. you show that once uh, uh, like for example can you take one uh, like footer page right so mm. there is role content info like that and where are you uh, modifying the properties uh, here C can you modify uh, mm. here uh, for that web page okay you want to you want you want me to modify this thing here yeah yeah i mean so something look. right now we have footer right mm -hmm. okay right now the footer color is something right we can change it to what are you seeing the change right now okay 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 yeah okay leave that thing aside okay okay cool the point here is guys uh yeah uh, the point here is guys they uh, i mean my my main point here is they don't literally have any logic in them they just create they just what create a building uh, they just create what all these building blocks okay what actually has logic javascript has actually logic with which you can control for example when you click on this thing okay something should be opened okay and before open after opening we have some information here and this information should come from where from the server now who can do all these things javascript can do all, all these things so javascript adds logic javascript brings uh, what dynamic ability to your uh, what to your html which have written so that is the point guys so that's why html and css they never come under what programming languages so if you learn html don't call yourself as a developer okay there is still a lot of things to be done to become a developer so that is the point okay but yeah html is what is like what starting step to become a web developer yeah so let's get started
so let's write some html code and let's get started so guys to write some html code for example uh, with html i want to create one paragraph let's say i want to say uh, good morning okay i hope uh, I, I i hope this color is okay with you guys is it so good morning now the point here is uh, your html finds this particular text little bit unorganized okay this is not how you have to write good morning okay you have to say that what kind of text it is is it a heading or is it a paragraph or is it a what some other text which is of what bold type or italic type so the point here is when you're writing something in your html you have to give a lot of clarity to the browser instead of writing what some random text directly so how we can give that clarity or how we can achieve that thing the point here is everything in your html is composed of of one second it's composed of tags guys so what are tags okay for example imagine uh let's say for example just give me one name for example what we call this thing uh shall we call this thing as something like download yeah let's call it as a download so in html what you have to do is for example download okay take a look you you open download tag and you close the download tag and here you have to say download for any os so now your html can uh, can what understand these tags okay just and assume it okay literally when you send this particular document to the browser your browser cannot understand download tag i'm just giving an example okay so what you have to do is guys you have to write your text or you have to write your content between the tags and how tags should and how tags should be composed with what open uh, ang angle bracket or angular bracket and what your tag name and then what close angular bracket and then open angular bracket okay then slash then what your tag name and close so this is what opening a bracket this is what closing a bracket sorry this is what opening a tag and this is what closing a tag so between open tag and closing tag you have to write your text okay no matter whatever you do if you want to put an image file if you want to put a large text if you want to put a video or anything you have to do with what these tags okay so without these tags you cannot go forward so the first tag which you have to learn is html tag okay this is the important tag okay without this tag you, can, you should not do anything and the next tag which you have to learn is head tag okay take a look html in html i have head okay and then next tag you have to learn is body tag okay cool right so take a look html in the html we have two different tags one is head and one is body okay now let's open this particular uh, file here let's say yeah this is here itself right so take a look let's inspect it so we have our html and we have our head we have our body okay so this is how one has to get started guys okay now where you have to fill the content the point here is you have to fill the content within the body okay you should never fill the content within the head for example let me write something like uh, some text okay let's say i wrote some random text okay so let's take a look at it okay and you opened your website right let's refresh it so take a look okay you have some content here so the point here is never put content directly here put a content in a tag so there is one uh, specific tag which is called paragraph tag okay just write p and press enter okay it will give you what uh, i mean it will give you open and closing tag and here just write something and press enter so it will take a look okay how i'm how i'm able to all how i'm able to do all these things is okay when you install this particular editor you already have a plugin in it called 
uh, called what emit okay so once you install tomorrow if you don't have these things you can share share me your screen such that i can control your machine and see all these things so this is not a big thing okay i mean this auto complete things so for example the moment take a look just write p and press tab okay your p tag is created just write some text okay this is emit abbreviation this plugin will take care of everything if you press tab the entire thing is filled so these are these are lot simple guys no need to worry okay one time once you configure you can what you can literally use them so that is the thing so right now we have used what p tag here within the what body tag okay now let me use one heading tag h1 let's say new title sorry t i t l v yeah yeah i have a new title here yeah so this is how guys okay one has to what get started with html okay html is composed of what tags between the tags you have your data okay and every tag which has to open which has to be closed after your job is done your job is what to fill the data right now once you fill the data close the tag if you don't close the tag okay imagine if you don't close h1 okay now this h1 will have what this data and it also has what p tag in it okay now it is now your browser is, is searching for what where is the closing h1 tag now it will put this entire thing in what h1 let's take a look right now take a look so this will lead to what uh, yeah this will lead to what lot of uh, design bugs so whatever you do you have to close it so make sure guys every time when you close when you open a tag make sure after your job is done are you closing it or not okay so, so there is a point guys one question sir uh, we don't have yeah. a closing tag here right for h1 so then it's supposed to give a error out right then why it's executing like without uh, having the closing tag for h1 yeah okay the point here is guys if it is a programming language like javascript or something for example uh, let me go to console okay and let me say x into 5 okay uncaught uncaught reference error x is not defined okay? okay it is saying that you didn't create x and you didn't give a value to x x but you are still trying to multiply x with what 5 javascript is strict why right? because it is a programming language your html is not strict no matter whatever you give it will try to what adjust and it will what it will, it will try to do the best thing it can do to execute your code okay, okay. that is okay. that is with what html so even though you give a lot of a lot of what um, a lot of a lot of uh, code with mistakes it will try to what execute that thing and we and uh, okay it will stop at the point where it cannot do so it cannot literally throw errors why because it is not a programming language so that is the thing guys your browser also will not do anything so that's why we have to be careful okay so there is one mechanism here and that mechanism is we install certain javascript libraries those javascript libraries will will what uh, will inspect our code and it will throw error every time when we miss what certain tag okay that will that thing will happen once we con once we configure our project Okay, that is later. Okay, for now, uh, yeah. I have one question to... here. I have one question here. So, uh, hmm. but you you have that uh, uh, H one tag, right? The closing tag is also there, right? So why should it throw an error there? No, just we remove closing tag before. He he is asking about that thing. Okay. Okay. Ah, just before we have removed the closing tag and we have executed this thing. we got this result at that time he is asking about this situation okay okay yeah sure sorry about it okay. i have one question i have one question ah. here so mm -hmm. i heard uh, there is xhtml also uh, what is the difference between html and xhtml that is my first question and uh, the second question is uh, 
when we miss the certain tags in the HTML, the way we are discussing the example right now, is there any DTD associated like uh, which will you know mandate okay without uh, uh, having the proper syntax on the uh, code, it will not even allow to render the page or something. So can you just uh, brief on the two questions, XHTML and uh, DTD part? Okay. Uh, I don't know about XHTML, okay? And one thing I can say is uh, HTML is enough for you to deal with React or Angular or 99% of the web development applications which are running in the internet right now, okay? Uh, XHTML, I don't know about that thing, what actually it serves, okay? Uh, that is first thing. Second thing is, uh, would you please come again with the second uh, second question? Uh, let me understand it again. Uh, second question is, let's say the yeah. heading part, heading close tag, we missed it, right? So hmm. if you miss it, the paragraph is also considered as a heading, right? No, the paragraph is also In... considered as a part of heading. Yeah. Correct, correct. So basically the heading was not closed. So is mm -hmm. there any way to enforce uh, in the HTML file that if something was missing, like a closing tag of h1. So is there any compilation error or something which we can introduce so that it can be corrected? Mm, okay, let me speak about that thing. So the point here is when you give this HTML to a JavaScript, Okay, now that JavaScript, okay, uh, what it will do, imagine there is one JavaScript library, which will what, which will try to what, uh, go through each and every line of our HTML code, which you have written. Okay, and then if it comes across one H1 tag, it will look for what some content, and it will keep on looking for what, where is the closing H1 tag. And if it cannot find closing H1 tag, it will throw an error. There are such libraries, okay, there are such libraries, which will report the errors in your HTML code, okay? But we didn't install that library right now, so we don't have that report right now. You got it? Understood. So going forward, we look at those examples. Exactly. Yeah. In Angular, Angular literally takes care of that job, okay? In Angular, if you literally miss anything, it will show. It will. It will, it will literally say you. You missed the H1 closing tag, okay? So it will take care of those things. So Angular and React, they have already such uh, implementation integrated in them. So need not worry about those things, okay? Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, cool. So that is the thing, guys, okay? So we have H1, we have P, okay? Now the main point here is, guys, okay, uh, we, can, we can fill our, what we call our body with lot of headings, okay? Lot of uh, P tags, okay? For example, we have H1, we have H2, sorry, yeah, we have H3, okay. What I have just done is, I have just selected all these things and shift alt down arrow, so it will just replicate the thing, okay. So H4, H4, okay. Let me show this thing to you. So take a look guys. So this is H1, okay. This is H2, and this is H3, and this is H4, okay? And I think this is H, is this H5? Okay, let's check what actually it is. If you go to inspect element, this is also H4, okay? This is H1, this is H1, and this is H2, H3, H4. In this way, you can continue until H6, guys. And for every uh, for every tag from H1 to H6, okay, the you can see the decrease in the intensity, right? In the font size, in the what what we call in the bold, you know, right? Bold, normal, italic. So even the bold at even the bold properties also is decreasing. So that is a difference, guys. So in this way, we can compose uh, what we call multiple headings and multiple what uh, paragraphs. Apart from all these things, what is the main thing which I want uh, you to understand is controlling the layout of your web page. Okay, focus on this thing. Uh, you can literally you once you learn to use how to use H1 and P1, that is very simple. But controlling the layout 
it's literally very very complex so even the people right now who are very good at html or uh, angular or react even angular or react they find very hard to control the layout okay so right now let's take a look uh, at this particular website take a look guys okay if you take a look at this particular website okay right now what you are seeing okay we have one strip here okay the top strip which is in what gray color and then immediately under it we have what another black strip in that we have what visual code and few menu right so let's see how we can do how we can achieve this thing okay and before achieving this thing guys okay we need what uh, this row this row three rows and then what one final fourth row you got it right so let's try to create this layout or let's try to what uh, try to crack this thing so guys uh, so to create blocks in your what we call uh, document okay till now we have created content in our document right this, this entire thing is our content and every content should be part of your body tag don't write anything out of body tag guys okay even though your html executes it that is not a standard okay don't write that thing okay always write always use your body tag okay and don't write any content outside of your body tag now right now our job is to create some what sections in our body right so to create a section guys you can use a tag called division tag div okay div close okay open and close this is one division tag take a look let me reload it right now okay you have one division tag okay now what i'm gonna do okay i'm gonna add some css to it okay to add some css to it guys go to your uh, head section take a look go to your head section okay and create a tag called style style open it and close it okay guys okay now what you do we have we have just created a div tag right and then we have created what style tag right now what i want to do is i want to give width to width to what to this particular div tag okay so i will go here and i will choose my tag i will select my tag here then i will open and close my flower brackets take a look okay now within this flower brackets i can write css code and that css code can control the what all the properties of what this particular div tag for example let me say width hundred percent okay let me go and let me refresh it okay this div width is what hundred percent okay take a look guys by default okay the div width is what hundred percent the moment you click on it it is showing here okay or let's say let's give some background color okay let's give red black anything doesn't matter and let's give height also as 100 so take a look so we have a div which literally has what 100 percent 100 percent okay this is the actual view okay which is occupying 100 percent of our what body okay so take a look guys this div is an immediate child of your body okay and you said that this div should occupy 100 percent 100 percent of what 100 percent of its parent width okay and its body is what occupying entire thing so it literally occupied 100 uh, okay with 100 percent height 100 percent okay now it, it it also has what background color okay but you are still seeing some gap here if you take a look okay there is little gap right between uh, the border of your what we call web tab i mean the border of your window and what your actual do this is your do okay let's write some content here this is div okay cool so this is this is your do now what about this thing you didn't literally uh, exp i mean you we didn't write anything for this right so the point here is guys every html file which you create it has a body tag right i mean you we will write a body tag right the moment you write a body tag it comes with okay default properties 
Okay, I'll show that thing to you. Let's, yeah. This is our div and let's click on our body. Take a look. By default, body is coming with what? Margin 8 pixels. Now this is something uh, which is causing the gap here. So go here into style. Now write styles for what body, B O D Y. So write your body tag, open and close brackets. Take a look. Now, what is the margin eight pixels, right? Just say margin zero. You nullified it, right? So now let's check it. So now this is a complete one. Okay, so there is a point guys. So by default, okay, uh, you have to nullify your uh, margin of your body, that is must. Okay, then you start designing your what? Uh, designing your what? Things, okay, cool. Now what we have to do, we have to create four rows like this, right? So let's do that thing right now, okay? So do, um, uh, now I need another row like this. So first row, second row, third row, fourth row. So this is div1, div2, div3, and div4. Okay, I just copy and pasted it. Okay, now let's take a look. So this is div1, div2, div3, div4. Okay, take a look guys. Now, I want this div to be what? Only not this much of height. I want this div to be what very little of height. For example, here the white strip you see, okay, this has what around 20 or 50 pixels of height. So how I can make my div one? Okay, this is my div one, right? Okay, to have height of what 50 pixels. So let's say height will be of what 50 pixels. Now let me check it right now. So almost yeah, let me go to actual size. So command O will reset it. Now this is your actual size. Okay, I have just brought it to what? 100% uh, zoom level. Okay, now it is more than 100%. That's the reason, uh, okay, it is zoom. Now let me, let me bring it to what 100%. Okay, so the point here is guys, when I try to control that div one, all other divs are also getting controlled, okay? Why? Because when I say div, it will apply to what? All the div tags. This div tag, this div tag, this div tag. So what your browser will do is, it will apply to what? All the div tags. So right now when you use div, right? So you target, which, which, which literally means you targeted all the div tags which are there in the body. So right now we have to learn how to target a div tag specific, uh, I mean, uh, especially this div tag or this div tag, how to do that thing. So that is what we have to do right now. So in order to do that thing, guys, we can give a attribute here and that attribute is called class. And let's say, let, we can give our own value to it. Let's say anything, but let's let's do what one. Let's give what our own, something which can make sense. So I gave a attribute called class and the value is what one. You got it right. So now with this thing, I can literally cherry pick only this div and give my properties to it. For example, let me do that thing. So this is a class which has what one as a value, right? So since it is a class in my CSS, I will let my CSS know that it is a class with a syntax called dot and then my class name. Okay, and then open bracket and close bracket. If you want to target a HTML, you can simply say what? div okay but right now you don't want to target your html tag you want to target the class attribute of it so you will simply say dot o n e one okay now it will target now your html or now your browser will search where is the class one so the class one is here immediately it will try to try to what pick this element right now okay let's do that thing right now let's say height 50 pixels and background color Let's give black. Okay, and let's refresh it. So cool, right? We already got a black color right now. Okay, a black color strip. Take a look. 
cool right so this is the difference between what targeting elements with the uh, HTML tags or what HTML attributes like class okay and there is one thing guys which I forgot to say you have a lot of HTML tags okay you can divide these HTML tags into two things block elements inline elements what is a block element for example okay let me remove everything okay and let me write one p tag and let me say something like this and let me refresh it so take a look ah, you have one p tag now when you write something like p here once again your next p is coming down you got it right okay now there is also one tag uh, let me remove this thing there is also one tag called span tag okay and let's write some content here okay let me refresh it this is our span right now okay so let's write some content here the line ends here okay ah. okay now let me write one more span the line starts here Take a look guys okay uh, what my point here is now let's write some p tag okay and let's write another p tag hmm. cool okay the point here is your p tag when you create your p tag it will occupy that entire row okay and will not give any side space or any space okay for what following tag I mean the, our following tag is what another p tag okay this p tag is occupying entire row and the next p tag is what it has to come under it there is no way this will come what beside it but coming to the span tag okay if you take a look your line ends here and this your line what take a look guys your tag ends here your span tag ends here and what another span tag starts here okay but coming to p tag it is not like that though your p tag ends here and though, though there is some extra space here right after this particular word and after this full stop you have some extra space now this p has to occupy here that thing will not happen why because this p tag is a block element okay so a block element will occupy entire row okay inline elements they don't do such things okay they continue with what accommodating some space okay so these are the two different elements guys when it comes to layout that is something which you just keep in mind block elements and inline elements so span is a good example of what inline elements it doesn't literally occupy entire row okay now guys let me let us roll back let us roll back everything okay take a look yeah now what my point here is this div is also a block element okay so this divs okay this div is also a block element okay yeah so we have only uh, inline element as span only right or do we have any other tags we can use it as uh, inline elements yeah we will i mean if if uh, there are a lot of tags with uh, which has what inline for example what is that thing? Mm, bold tag, i tag. Okay. Oh, okay. We will yeah. see. Li, okay. li as well, right? No, li is not a uh, what we call inline in inline tag. Okay. 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 Thank you. We will see those things. Okay. If I if I come out if I uh, if I write another inline tag, I will let you know at that time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So now let's go and what? Let's create another what we call line here, and let's try to create this menu. Okay, cool. Uh, so I have one other div here. Let me create a class called what menu here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going. I'll write a what menu here. So right now, guys, I'm targeting what this particular div. Is it? Yeah, of course. 
Now let me give a background color here. Okay, the background color should be black, but not exactly black, right? So let me hover on it. It has given me a color palette. Now what I will do is I will drag. I think this is enough. So let's check it. Yeah, there is a difference, right? This is pure black and this is what? Uh, something different, right? Yeah, there is a difference here. Okay, so or should I? Uh, at least right now we can see the difference, right? Yeah, cool. So let's try to what put some image. I think we can get this image open. Cannot we get that image? Yeah, we can get that image. But we have to copy this huge line of code, I think. Leave it. We can somehow get image any, from anywhere else. That, that, that is not a big thing. Yeah. So let's check the layout again, guys. What is the layout? Uh, layout has a image and then what? One particular heading and then one, two, three, four, five, six menu items. And then guys, one such one such interface and then what one button. Okay, these are all these are all the things. Now guys, it is job for us to divide our section. Okay, we have created this particular section, right? Okay, we have just created that particular section. So this is our this due to is our particular section. Okay, in actual scale, it, it looks like this. Okay, so don't worry about what this zoom in and zoom out. Okay, just worry about what how best we can divide this particular section. Now what I can say is I can divide my entire row into two sections guys. One section which has what all these uh, elements. Okay, logo code and what all these menu another section which has what input and what button you got it right. So right now I'm going to divide this thing into two sections. One is uh, all these uh, links another one is what button and what these things. Okay. Now in all these links, okay, from here to here, this is one section and from here to what? And this is another section. Now guys, when I divide the my layout into what two different sections, the first section is what? This entire section, okay, until here. Now this section also can be divided into two things. Where you have what? Logo and what heading and then what simple menu. Well, because all these menu seems to what? seems to me like what look alike or uniform than what uh, this logo and what uh, heading to me so you have to keep on dividing the sections guys that is how okay you have to approach your design okay with what first you take one block and then after identifying what can be divided with that block then divide it okay then divide it what based okay based on i mean you will understand it right okay this can be grouped into one div this can be grouped into another div. In this way, you have to divide it. And finally, you will, re you will reach a point where you cannot divide anymore. Okay, now start developing from there. So that is a point, that is a point here, guys. So right now, I will create uh, two sections. In those two sections, uh, one section will have what? Furthermore, two sections. So let, let me do that thing right now. So in this div two, use this thing. Mm. I have to create what two different sections so I can go for div. I can go for another div. Let me give a class to it. You can give any class, but I will say left. Okay, this makes sense to me. So right. You got it right? Cool. But the point here is guys, never ever in your HTML write a lot of div tags. Okay, stop writing div tags. That, that is a good thing, okay, to write some good HTML. Then what we have to do? We have a lot of tags, okay? We have section tag, okay? You use these things, okay? Cool, right? So, to be brutally honest, we don't need even div tag also. I mean, as I said, uh, instead of writing this div tag, we can write now tag. There is a now tag. You can write now tag okay 
so every time when you write some html guys keep one thing in your mind write as much as less uh, as much less what we call um, do tags okay go for what more tags like uh, go, there are a lot of tags okay so seems like right now nav is not working let's check what actually happened mm, let's go to our inspect element okay now where is now okay nav is display block with but it doesn't have what some width or something so let's go to now here so let's say nav now so, so okay. is there a difference between the nav div and section like all of them uh, like each tag is uh, they have some uh, uh, own purpose right its own purpose right so i mean how to know which one to use or which one to go for uh there is no restriction that you have to go for nav or anything okay but the point here is if you create a lot of div tags okay mm -hmm. uh, your html cannot uh, identify the difference between div tags until unless you apply class or a, a class or what other attributes you got it right so when you have a lot of tags available in html why don't you just use them there is a point okay that literally gives you uh, that literally what uh, i mean gives advantage for the browser to understand what your html even more okay 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 yeah mm -hmm. and there is one underlying advantage okay which we will uh, come across in future okay uh, there is a thing called accessibility okay uh, yeah we will see the topic in future not right now uh, now writing all these tags is a foundation for such topics okay which we learn in future okay so just uh, try to what be in a receiving mode right now yeah so where is my now here okay my now suddenly it lost its width why because yeah i didn't write anything right so now here take a look guys it is a html tag okay so width should be 100 percent of its parent yeah now let's see what the parent of now the parent of now is still body guys okay and all the div tags are what just like siblings to it okay cool and height should be somewhere around 50 pixels cool right yeah now let's take it now let's refresh it okay it still has its color from where this color is coming okay this color is coming from where from the menu from the class menu so right now to this now okay all the properties of now tag and all the properties of menu tag are being applied so there is a point here now guys let's try to what uh, crack our main layout yeah this is the thing right yeah so let's give there are two sections here right now your javascript cannot understand the difference between these two sections so it's time for us to give what more attributes let's say left let's say right hmm? yeah now what we will do is we'll say we'll do one thing the left should occupy if you take a look here the left one should occupy until here right so 80 percent of the width and uh, mm, what we call the right should occupy just 20 percent of the width so let's do that thing right now so in now okay we have so take a look guys right now once again i'm writing now now space dot left which actually means in now there is a element with what uh, with what left as a class so go and target that thing so in now in now so there is an element with left so it will target this thing okay now then what it will target uh, okay if i say right it will target this thing okay so before doing all these things guys uh, what i want to do is mm, what i want to do is yeah i want to create a lot of a uh, lot of section tags here okay a lot of section tags okay and let's remove the unnecessary clutter we have um, 
okay why i created a lot of section tags means yeah let's see uh in now we have what section right sec tion hmm? section in now we have section so how many sections all these sections will be selected right now if i target it here so let's say width 20 pixels or let's say 150 pixels let's create squares 50 pixels background color let's say blue or something yeah so take a look guys so this is our nav tag let's see the layout right now okay this is our nav tag but it has a lot of sections okay take a look is section a block or not why because it is occupying entire row you got it right so sections are what a pure block so now we have these sections now how to control all these things okay this is the time you have to write some best css okay so what i'm doing is right now by default let's see what actually now is okay now take a look take a look guys the nav is also by default it is block okay and it's children now has a lot of children and a lot of children are what section each section is also what a display block so these all are block elements so there are uh okay so right now guys what i want to do is i want to change this now from block element to what there is another new display thing display property and that property is flex okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to say display instead of block i'm going to remove this thing and i'm going to say flex take a look guys okay the moment i do flex what actually happened let's take a look okay let's go to our console and let's check our now okay take a look guys right now now display is what flex now what actually happened is you have all the elements in it right all the children in it now all those children are arranged from left to right if you take a look yeah they are arranged from left to right okay so with one line okay you can literally change the direction okay so the moment you became the moment the moment you made now as our display flex this now will become a flex container okay this now is right now is a flex container now each child has become a flex item in it you got it right so each child has become a flex item in it now what we can do is let's give uh, some padding here let's say let's give some padding 20 pixels or let's give some margin sorry not padding margin yeah uh, we will do one thing guys we will remove the height of now from 50 pixels okay now it will yeah take a look cool so these all are flex items guys take a look one two three four these all are flex items okay now the point here is let me let us put what a lot of flex items in it so right now in our nav is a flex container why because its display property is flex now a lot of flex items now let's see what actually will happen what happened where is the thing display flex okay let's let's decrease few flex items yeah take a look the point here is no matter how much you give guys okay your browser is trying to what adjust all those things in the one row okay the next uh, other things are not coming down take a look guys uh, the the point here is you have given width to what 150 pixels for your flex item isn't it which is nothing but what section but is this now right now when you're taking a look at it is this literally look like a width of 150 pixels no right it is around width of 10 pixels or 5 pixels so the point here is guys 
since there are a lot of flex items take a look it is trying to what put everything in one row okay imagine let's remove all these things and let's have two now let's see what will happen okay since there is what uh, enough space it is occupying what uh, i mean the width which you have given now let's try to what give one give one more let's see what actually will happen okay now since we have enough space it is trying to what yeah put it into what it's trying to what take its own width now guys when i give another one it will not have enough space to accommodate another what flex item another section but still it has to try to accommodate at the time what happens means all the remaining three will shrink irrespective of what the width which you have just given so let's check that thing so take a look they did okay they did adjusted right so that is the difference between flex item and a normal item okay a normal item will not do that thing it will occupy entire thing and if you cannot adjust that thing in the same row it will send that particular div or that particular element down okay but coming to flex items they adjust your they adjust all these things in a same row okay so let's try to what increase these things and let's see how far they Zero. can adjust so take a look. zoom it and see hello yeah yeah i can have you zoom and you, you want me to zoom this is zoom i don't know why are you asking me to zoom it and see uh, because uh, if we uh, i mean uh, zoom matlab uh, reduce the window size the browser window size because achha, i think achha. the width, uh, so ah, we you want me to reduce the window size uh, width width yeah so okay it's uh, relatively taking it okay yeah. understood it's still I in same, same uh same row so that is the thing about what flex items now what we have to do let's 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 what increase the things and let's say that you occupy whatever you can okay and then if you still cannot adjust them don't shrink send them to uh, what next row now that is what you have to do right so you just go to your container okay and say that flex wrap wrap okay now it will try to what adjust it cool right so this is the thing guys now what about this extra space now this extra space looks awkward right uh, okay now this is something which we don't want to this is something which you don't want to have in any design uh, okay this is stupid right so what we have to do now this extra space something which we have to deal with so how we can deal with okay i will uh, come up with few different things so let's see okay since we since our flex container is taking this particular property okay all the flex items got wrapped right now what we can do is to each flex item we can give one property called flex grow one okay so let's see what will happen take a look guys so wherever it has extra space your flex item it will occupy that thing okay since right now there is no chance to uh, occupy extra space in the in the above okay try to occupy no matter what it can and then what it is continuing in the third row okay we can adjust two flex items and there is a lot of extra space so it literally occupied your entire thing okay so now you can understand how flex layouts literally bring a lot of uh, what we call advantage for you in terms of uh, what we call controlling the layout so let's see let, let's shrink our window size take a look okay they are adjusting beautifully so there is a property called response there is a thing called responsiveness in web development that thing is making your layout be adjustable to any width that that is of mobile or tablet or, or laptop or anything okay so to bring responsiveness to your web applications you have to use what flex layouts sometimes media queries okay all these things guys so yeah okay now why i'm saying all these things means okay i need two divisions here one division should occupy 80 percent of it and another division should occupy just 20 percent of it so one division should have a flex grow of what more than another 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 division so that is the reason okay 
I'm saying all these things. So I think right now I'm going to remove all these things right now. And let's refresh it. Take a look, guys. I gave 150 pixels, but do you know what? It is no more taking 150 pixels. Why? Because flex grow one is same for section and this section. Now space section means it will target all the sections. Now each section is having what flex grow one and flex grow one. Okay. Now what I will do is I will say now section. Sorry. Okay. Take a look now section means it will target these two elements which are there under the now space is nothing but what just a difference between parent and child you're literally saying what section which is the child of now okay that is what you're saying now what i will do is i will say section which is the child of now which has a attribute of class and value of what left take a look guys so don't think I'm targeting both sections right now. I'm targeting what only the first section. Okay. Now what I will say is I'll just say flex grow two right now. So now this thing should grow more and this thing should shrink. The left one should go more and this thing should shrink. Why? Because the right one is of still flex grow one and this is of flex grow two. Okay. So let's see that thing right now. I think now it is what little bit around 80% or let's make it three right now. Yeah, cool, right? So let's go to uh, let's go to actual scale of our window. Command zero. Oh, this is actual scale. Cool. Okay, fine. Let's make it four right now. That will be better. Yeah, cool. Now you can accommodate your image here, all the you all the menu here, and what? let's let's take care about this thing later so this is how guys uh one has to let's remove the margin also not 20 pixels and instead of height 150 let's bring it to what 50. so yeah cool so right now we have created these two different sections isn't it yeah Okay, but right now you people will say what about this gap here before starting this section? There's a lot of gap right and before ending of this section. There's a lot of gap now it means It should not it means our layout should not start from the Start and should not start at the end. There should be a gap on the both sides Right now to do that thing guys. What we will do is uh, We'll come up with what another uh, Take a look. I'm cutting this thing now this is the time I don't uh, I will come up with what one more div tag okay so though I want to avoid writing a lot of div tags at sometimes you are still I have to write it you can still continuing write that thing okay that's not a issue now guys let me give a class call wrapper okay I'm just giving this class okay just because you wrote this class nothing will happen you have to write CSS styles here so dot wrapper what wrapper will do is it will take width of 80 percent of parent and what is parent now and what is the now width what is the width of now 100 percent 100 percent of what body so right now wrapper will take 80 percent so let's take is Let's take a look and let's see what actually will happen. Man, what did just happen? Okay, okay, take a look, guys. This div wrapper is taking what? 80% width. That's not an issue. Okay, but our entire layout got wrong, right? Why? Because right now this div is of display block. So section this section and this section are no more flex items they're just like what block items right now so what you do is whatever the properties you have put for what uh now here you cut them you cut them from now and bring it to what wrapper cool now let's see okay now what what is the issue 
width is 100% now we need separate styles for divisions yeah yeah one second hmm where i am right now 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 width is 100% okay cool in that we have wrapper wrapper width is what 80% 80% okay okay display flex okay let's try to what uh, crack this layout right from the console so we have now here guys i'm gonna bring it down here okay so i hope this is visible for you so let's click on nav. Nav is completely occupying from end to end. That is perfectly fine. Now let's click on do wrapper. Yeah. Now I will give a margin auto. Okay. So when I when I did give margin auto, it came into what center right now. But I'm worried from where this uh, that different color is coming. Okay. Okay. The point here is guys. I have dues, I have properties of do here. This width 100%, height 50 pixels. So these are being applied to do, do here. Okay, I just gave a general do. So now this since this is also a do, so these properties are getting applied. I'll just remove this thing. I'll just comment this thing. Okay, to comment control and slash. Okay, it will get commented. It. So let's check fine okay this is cool right now let's go to wrapper and then say margin auto so now they are in the middle you got it right so what margin auto does is if any division is having not any division if any element is having fixed width okay margin auto will literally center that particular division in the middle so our wrapper is of 80%. Now it is in the middle. Now that wrapper has what? Two different sections. Now those two different sections are what? Flex items. One is of flex grow four and one is of what? Flex grow two. Okay. And tomorrow guys, we will try to fill this thing with what? Uh, content. Like how exactly this is. So we will continue moving forward with what? Uh, this layout. And then what? We'll then go into Angular. And then we will move forward okay so if you have any questions or anything you can ask me i think time for to close this session guys thank you for your time uh, hello uh, hello yeah yeah i'm i'm, li I'm listening yeah Drudu. so the thing is that while setting up the node.js uh, tools for native modules should i automatically install the necessary tools or i should just leave them so when you go to installation uh, tools from native modules yeah i should accept so what it. is that thing right can i, yeah, can I share accept my screen? it yeah accept it right i should take it right because he's yeah, yeah. asking Doesn't that matter. it is asking it will install chocolatey it will ask install and nothing nothing happens you just keep on installing okay if something happens you can install it again that's not an issue all it has to do is guys okay once you install it uh better restart it restart your machine and then go to terminal okay in case if your windows go to search and type cmd yeah, yeah. you get the terminal. Yeah. and once you get the cmd guys just type node okay and yeah, yeah. see yeah it will version it explains the version it is yeah yeah for example imagine if uh, no if, if java is not installed here for example let's say um, java is not installed here okay i have java here sorry uh let's say let's give uh, let's say php is not installed here okay even php is installed i think okay let's let me let me take one random command okay let's say screen s c r e n if screen screen is also installed okay guys one second Con I'll do one thing. Let's come up with one random command. Let's say Monday. Okay, Monday is not installed. 
uh, it will say Monday command not found. Okay, if this the same thing happens for you, if you type Node.js, it means Node.js is not installed. The moment you say Node, okay, and when you press enter, it says Node command not found, which means at the time Node is not installed, you have to install it again. Okay, so that is the thing, guys. Okay, instead of saying this thing, you have what uh, a CLI here. Now uh, at that time, Node is installed, so need not worry about it. Just do Control C. You will come out of your CLI and then check what npm hyphen v. Okay, it will give you version number, which means npm is also installed. If it says npm command not found, then what npm is also not installed. So that is all, guys. Okay. Thank you, guys. You can start leaving. And some other people, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, about the npm as you said i i, I after i said the node it showed the version okay and then okay, that's okay you can do it later uh, that yeah. is a very simple thing yeah. yeah no need to worry about such things yeah. tomorrow we will see it yeah if you have anything just install these tools guys okay if you if you have any things just search in the stack overflow okay then even though you don't uh unable to do it we will do it tomorrow not a big thing Okay, and I hope you will get these videos. So yeah, just try to play with some CSS, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no need to say, just leave. If you have any questions, you can ask me.